Hi friends, welcome back to Mule 4 series of learning videos. I am Shivathan Kamani, an Integration Technical Architect. In the current uh, distributed computing world, we have uh, different systems connected uh, in an integration system in order to get one transaction completely successful. But in such scenarios, uh, it's not always the case where uh, producer and consumer are uh, acting in a same pace. For example, producer can uh, produce uh, number of requests in a varying pace where the receiving system can take it uh, in a different number of uh, way. That depends on the capability of the uh, producer and consumer systems. So in such cases always there is a race condition possible when we use VM because in a MuleSoft Cloud Hub uh, you don't have a file mechanism uh, to use the file effectively but uh, the alternate is to use VM so we are going to find uh, some scenarios or where this uh, race conditions can occur and then we are going to find uh, some alternate solution on how we can tackle that. Let's get started. I have a simple flow that uh, simulates the producer consumer issues. So we have a, a HTTP listener that publishes the incoming data into the VM queue and uh, we have a, a polling flow that uh, retrieves the incoming uh, record. Uh, from the VM queue and then process it. So we I have the global element that configures uh, VM and I have a queue called uh, purchase order queue where the incoming orders are placed and once they are placed uh, there is a listener that retrieves the incoming orders and processes them. So I have already uh, made this uh, application up and running. So let's uh, watch the console logs uh, while we are running for different requests. So I have the input and the response is uh, giving me the timestamp that shows the records uh, processed in various, uh, uh, at various times. So let's run it. So I'm running uh, several times to demonstrate uh, how it works. So let's go and watch the console. As you can see, uh, the number of records are processed immediately uh, as they are retrieved. So this might pose some issue, I'll, I'll explain uh, where we can practically uh, have the uh, complex situation uh, when you are dealing with this uh, producer consumer uh, scenario. So this, this might always be theoretical and you cannot always Google it out and it all comes with experience. And uh, you can, uh, I'm just trying to share the experience uh, which can possibly occur in your project situation as well. So um, while handling this uh, records directly by retrieving and then processing, there is a bottleneck. Uh, uh, imagine that incoming record is huge. So at that time, before even one record is processed, there is a, a chance that the next record is coming so quickly and uh, there is a race condition occurs. The, so a number of possible error scenario is more here. So um, we are going to avoid this by alternating uh, this uh, listener with a scheduler. Let's see how it works. So instead of listener, I'm going to use uh, consume and uh, we'll place it. So as you can see, the consume is coming at the right side and uh, we are going to do this uh, uh, scheduling. And uh, so we are going to configure this incoming record with the purchase order queue. And uh, I'm going to delete this uh, existing flow. And uh, we will do the logging to indicate the records are processed. Let's drag and drop logger. And we are going to log the payload. So we logged it. And we are going to configure the scheduler uh, uh, carefully. So frequency is going to be uh, uh, 5000 which is 5 seconds. And always there is a start delay that's important. Sometimes uh, a start delay even you can have it as uh, uh, 10 seconds. That is because uh, at times you might receive a, a big file, incoming file that you might need to process which contains thousands of records. So. Uh, it will take some time uh, for the listener to get complete uh, uh, incoming content 
which might require some start delay, uh, which is more than five seconds. So we are configuring this way. So uh, why do we need to configure like this? So now we have a scheduler and we have a controlled way of uh, processing the incoming records uh, that, that's retrieved once in five seconds. So even if the producer produces uh, like thousands of records during the peak period, uh, like there is a, a Christmas and New Year times, so there are more orders that keep coming in. So even then you can process the incoming record in a controlled way, like uh, once in five seconds or once in 10 seconds based on the capability of the infrastructure. Let's save this and then try to run and see how it works. I think it's already uh, started. Now let's uh, hit multiple records and let's see how it works. You can see here the records are being processed uh, once in five seconds in a controlled manner. So this gives us opportunity uh, not to lose any records and then uh, uh, even, in, even in some processing uh, there might be some ordering that are required that might have a dependency or sequence in which it has to be processed. So when you don't have such interval, uh, the uh, consecutive records might uh, get uh, processed before the dependent records are processed. So this is the best way uh, to deal with uh, such dependency. And then this is uh, processing in a controlled way where we will have less number of errors. So that's it in this video. I hope uh, sharing such uh, small, small techniques that come out of experience uh, will be useful to you as well so you can apply in your real-time projects. So hope you liked the video and if so, please uh, hit the like button and uh, subscribe my videos. I can come up with more useful uh, uh, kind of videos where I can share the experience with you. Again, thanks for watching. Bye.